My mother used to tell me stories about you. Ancient stories. I would touch the trunk of olive trees and she would say, Eden's garden had a tree like this, only much more alive. The tree of life. As a little boy, I would never understand what she meant. I mean, how could a tree bring life? Then you changed everything. You came unexpectedly, modestly. Not as a ruler or a warrior, but as a son. A friend, even. You met people where they were. I was just a fisherman, and yet you called me. You looked into my eyes, and you gave me a new name. Peter. And I followed you. I was with you all the time, but it never seemed to be a bother. You welcomed it. You welcomed everyone. I never understood why you stopped for them, but you did. Even people like that Samaritan woman who was out in the heat of the day drawing water. I wanted to ask, why are you talking with her? Don't you know who she is? But the look on her face, it, uh, it was the look, that same look of life that would soon become so familiar. Oh, you knew who she was. And she was changed. Again and again and again, you stood up for the weak, the wretched, those I wouldn't have even looked at. There was a woman caught in the act of adultery. I mean, how could she not deserve stoning? The law itself required it. Adulteress, they called her. Yet I never considered where the adulterer was. Your eyes met with hers. You freed her. And you changed our thinking. I remember the time that the house we were staying in was so crowded that the paralyzed man was lowered through a roof just to get to you. They wanted their friend to be healed, but no, you didn't do it right away. Again, you looked into his eyes and you forgave him of everything. Then you fixed his legs just to prove a point. That was just the beginning. Everywhere we went, people looked for you. Young or old, religious or sinner, they were looking for something. We were looking for something. And somehow, just a moment with you quenched it or fulfilled it. What I would do to have just one more moment with you now. You are truly life in a lifeless world. Prophecy after prophecy came true before my very eyes. Prophet Isaiah said he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. And you did. You even did it for my own family. When my mother-in-law was sick, you stopped and you healed her. And that was the first time it connected. I remember my own mother saying, the tree of life. Even while you were with us, there were terrifying times. I still don't understand how you slept through it. But maybe that was a lesson in itself. I knew who you were, but I didn't know until that moment. We had never seen anything like it. You reached your hand out and shouted at the star, and it obeyed. There was never a time when you truly left us, even if it felt that way for a moment. You were always constant, steady. What did you pray in those times? 
Was it for us? I feel like everything was for us. Your words, your actions, the way you loved us. You gave us gifts, even gifts that I pushed away. I told you you would never wash my feet. But you became a servant. You showed me otherwise. You called me clean. That night I walked on water, you asked me a question, and I can hear it almost as a whisper even now. Why are you afraid? But I am. I'm so afraid. They took you away. They shamed you. They killed you. Is this it? All those miracles? All the prophecies? Are you done? Is it finished? King of Kings. That's what we thought. That's what I thought. But then they mocked you, and I, uh, I uh, didn't. I, uh, I abandoned you. I told you I would die with you, and I meant it. I really meant it. But you just stood there. I did defend you. You can't blame me. I defended you, and you stood there. Where are your miracles now, huh? You said you were life itself? But you weren't supposed to be life to them. You healed the very people that killed you. I guess we're even now. I, uh, I abandoned you. But you abandoned me too. Why did you leave me like this? What am I supposed to do? You said to strengthen the brothers, but I, I can't, I can't. I can't even strengthen myself. Everyone's gone. Everything, please. Please, what am I supposed to do? For three years, I was with you. Closer than anyone. I gave everything. My work. My family. My life. Now you're gone? Everything you did, everything you spoke, what did it all mean if this is how it ends? the same as I did that night I tried walking on water. If only I could hear you ask, where's your faith? Your voice was like a cool drink of water. Now it's dried up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I let you down. It's too much for me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you 
You were a great prophet. I thought you were more. I thought you were the Messiah. That first time you looked at me, your eyes, you stared so intently into my very soul, and I never felt that close to God before. called me rock. Even Father Moses struck the rock that kept him from the promised land. Rabbi, were you wrong about me? told me Satan wanted to have me. I'm so afraid he's won. This can't be it. What's left? I'm supposed to go back to being a fisherman. be the end. You're Emmanuel. God with us. And they just need you to be with me now. He's alive.